So, uh, yeah, uh, 15 minutes for installing OpenCast. Uh, that could be another title for this for this presentation. Uh, I just want to show you a quick live demo while uh, going to the theory theory of it at first. So let's just dig in and then switch over to the live demo, which I'll probably fuck up. I know. So let's see how this works. So what you need, uh, this is about the installation from the RPM repository. So you need some kinds of RPM based system, which means essentially for package repository, it's, it's CentOS 7, it's Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, that's what I'm going to use in a moment, uh, or it's scientific Linux 7. Um, we are not supporting uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 anymore for a couple of years. So we still found out recently that people still use that. And we are not yet supporting uh, the better of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, which came out recently, but we will soon probably. But for now, you need CentOS 7. Um, yeah, then the second thing you need is an account on this page. This is docs. Sorry, this is packages.opencast.org, so pkg.opencast.org. Uh, just go here, register, and get an account, and you will get an email like this. Uh, where you have a user and your credentials. And by the way, these credentials are valid right now, but aren't in an hour or so. So don't try to use it for production. Uh, and then you basically need one page, though I'm going to show you three pages in the documentation. It's, we have, an, I would say, a very good installation guide from most of this. So uh, just go to this. This page basically tells everything I'm going to do in a moment. And uh, after that, you basically have an OpenCast installed. And uh, the second one is the basic installation instructions, the basic configuration. This is something you really should do. Basically, if you don't follow this instruction uh, and you don't know what to do, what you should do, then you don't have a proper set up OpenCast at the end. And finally, I would say there's no excuse today for not going with HTTPS, so really do that. Uh, it's optional in theory, in fact, no, even for test systems, go with HTTPS. So uh, starting from there, let's go to the shell. And uh, for this, I've just prepared a small server in AWS, so it's just an EC2 uh, with very, very limited resources. Don't try to run OpenCast on something like this, so it has a gigabyte of RAM and one core, uh, but it should work for uh, starting up OpenCast at first, and that's what we are going to do. So for my password, I actually prepared that in a text file here. So uh, what you need is your account information, and that's, that's my account information for what we're going to use. So I'm, first of all, uh, one, did, one thing I already did is to make sure that the EPL repository, the uh, Enterprise Linux Community repository, is already enabled. That's just by installing the EPL repository uh, package. But then I'm just going to etc yum repos d. And uh, by the way, again, this, this is in the, uh, the documentation. Oh. I should follow my own words. So we're going to yum repository. You can already see that there are a couple of repositories activated, and we are going to activate one more. And that is that is this one. Uh, there are two open cast repositories. There's uh, the the regular one, which is this one, and then there is open cast testing. And uh, Basically, what you get out of it is if you use the regular one, you only get the stable versions. I mean, for production, that's exactly what you want to do. Uh, but uh, if you have a test system, you can also enable uh, the testing repository, which is basically just the same command, just append testing. And for, the, for now, I'm going to do that, so actually, I think there's nothing spe special in there right now, I guess. Here we go. So just looking at this file for a second, um, it basically just 
access uh, the operating system, well, you can get all the software you need from here. And that's more or less all we actually need to do because uh, um, what I'm now going to do is just say um, to install OpenCast 6 all-in-one. And uh, we have a single server, so we are going with an all-in-one distribution. Uh, and by doing that, uh, the system will take care of installing all the dependencies. Um, so, so I don't have to build and compile and, and install FFmpeg man manually. Uh, the system will yeah, just do that automatically for me. And this can take a little bit of time. Here we go. Uh, so it basically just says right now that it's in installing OpenCast all-in-one. Uh, it's also installing ActiveMQ that's already built in and configured with the all-in-one uh, stuff. It's not for a distributed setup, so you can decide where to put ActiveMQ because it's a service you only need once. Uh, it will install FFmpeg, and for time reasons, I've already installed a few of the other dependencies, so uh, it doesn't have to pull down everything. But uh, it will install everything you need if you have nothing on the machine before. So I'm going with yes. So it's now going to download this and uh, put it in the right places and basically is preparing everything uh, for, for running OpenCast in the end. And yeah, so this obviously can take a little bit of time. Uh, while doing so, I can already explain the next steps. Um, one thing we are going to do, do or need to do is to configure ActiveMQ and start ActiveMQ. That's the next step. And uh, basically then we are going to uh, configure OpenCast, a very basic configuration, and start <coughs> OpenCast and yeah, w that should hopefully work. Uh, we'll see. downloaded it, it's installing. It's still installing. beauty of live demos. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering if I lost connection to the machine. <laughs> the hardest. Let me check if I lost the connection, maybe. <laughs> I promise I have this installed by the end of the day. Yeah, okay, finally. Uh, yeah, so now if I've a uh, system with OpenCast on it, and uh, what I still need to do is do the configuration stuff. So uh, for that, the first thing you need to do is to configure ActiveMQ. And uh, the good part here is that there is actually uh, an, a completely complete configuration included in OpenCast, at least for, for one server setup. Uh, for a multi-server setup, you need to do a little bit more uh, because uh, you need to set some passwords. And uh, right now, we only have it locally available, so we don't care. Um, so let's check. Here we go. Uh, the problem is only always getting these parts right, but that's documented. And what I'm go just going to do is to take the, the file here from... Uh, 
from the open cost installation and put it into the uh, the folder for the ActiveMP configuration. Uh, so now that's done, that's basically all I need to do to uh, set up ActiveMQ. So I can now uh, sudo system control uh, start ActiveMQ. Um, that should give us an ActiveMQ which is up and running. So let's uh, check the status. Yep, that looks good. It says running. Uh, that's what we wanted to see. So all the uh, preconditions are set for OpenCast. Next, what we want to do is to configure OpenCast. OpenCast. Uh, and we're actually only going to, uh, to configure one thing. And uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit. And you can call me out uh, about it later, but, but I'm going to explain what, why I cheated and what I did. So uh, the most important part here is to actually configure the location of OpenCast, basically where is uh, OpenCast available at the end of the day. And there is one, one configuration in here, uh, it's the one over here, uh, which basically says, okay, at the end of the day, OpenCast is available at this address, and that's the most important configuration you have to uh, set in this setting. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to uh, opencast.mqvirg.io. Uh, HTTPS is correct. And I've cheated about the HTTPS part because I've pre-configured that. Uh, oh, shit. I do know, n uh, need super user privileges to modify this file. Oh. So doing this again, uh, I'm going to set this to HTTPS and then I'm going to modify this and say this is open cast. So that's where we should be able to reach this instance in a minute. And that's basically it. And I can now uh, start up OpenCast. So, again, I can check the uh, status. And it says it's up and running. And it does take a while to take off. So, uh, you can check the logs uh, for things that are happening. And right now you see there is, uh, we can still wait, and now something starts to happen, and this will take about a minute to get fully working. And uh, waiting for that, I can, can make a little bit of an explanation about the HTTPS part. So what I did is I pre-configured uh, uh, what, was con what I showed here on the HTTPS part, because I would have needed to uh, put proper um, uh, certificates in place for that and get proper certificates for that and that's something which takes takes some time uh, but it's totally worth it um, what we can do actually um, and we can also see that and by the way I think it's connection because I, I can't interact with the VM right now uh, Okay, so then um, let's just. <laughs> Give me 20 seconds. <laughs> See, there's an open cast. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. So uh, again, this is pretty much documented all I did. Uh, there's no really magic, real magic involved. And uh, this is a very easy way to, to set up a test cluster. Uh, I wouldn't definitely do more configuration for your production system, but for a test cluster, this is something you can do. So, yeah. Who's next?